Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's episode 225 of the Audible Farm Podcast, and this episode is brought to you by the Fort Dodge Fine Arts Association. The Fort Dodge Fine Arts Association believes the arts should be accessible to everyone, and so do we. So check them out, fdfineartsassociation.org. They got an awesome website there. It's going through some revamping here and there. It's going to be pretty cool. I've, uh, I've seen some previews of what it may or may not end up looking like in, in certain areas. Very cool stuff. But they got a community calendar there that is absolutely amazing. There's always stuff to do in the Fort Dodge area. Always stuff to do in the Fort Dodge area. So check it out. The community calendar is great. They've got all sorts of other stuff on the website. They're a great organization. They help out Fort Dodge and the surrounding areas so much with anything and everything that has to do with art, music, theater, you name it. They're on it. Uh, check it out. They're a big part of why Audible Farm is here. And uh, they're one of our biggest cheerleaders out there. Also, have you checked out their last episode of FDT? If not, go to the Fort Dodge Fine Arts Association's YouTube channel and check it out. Otherwise, if you're watching this on the Audible Farm YouTube channel, just go over to our channel. We've got a playlist set up for them there. So FDT, another episode is out there. It's great. It's got the 515 Big Band in it, and it's fun. This episode, we're going back to where it all started. That's right. Clint Wheelman is back. He was on episode number one of the Audible Farm podcast. Episode one. That's right. You heard it. So, uh, I mean, he's been on here a couple times, maybe three, four times. I've had him on here with Three Finger Betty as a band a couple times. He was definitely on there the one time. Might have done another solo episode. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't do my research. Apologies. But... He's definitely one of the hardest working drummers in all of Iowa. I mean, I, I get it. Your buddy is a good drummer, too. Yes, we're all good drummers. I'm kidding. I'm not a good drummer. But, I mean, Clinton, like, what, six bands or something at the moment? Uh, every single weekend, he's out playing shows with somebody somewhere all the time. It's it's crazy. I think I play a lot of shows, and then I play a lot of shows with, like, Jesse or, you know, you get your Jeremy Obert, your Clint Riedels, your whatever, up in this area. It's There's a lot of guys that play a lot of shows, but Clint Wheelman is always out there grinding. We're, he hasn't been on in, like, two years, so we sit down and talk about basically what he's been up to the last two years, and it's been a lot. So strap yourselves in. This one's a little bit longer than normal, but it's a good one. So check it out. This is episode number 225 with Clint Wheelman. It's the Audible Farm Podcast with your host, Peter Stockdale. Sitting down with uh, Clint Wheelman. Clint, uh, it's been, I mean, it does, it's only been like 20-ish episodes since you were on the podcast, yes. but like two years <laughs> of time at least has, yeah. has passed since that was a thing <laughs> so uh clint's on the podcast today everybody uh a lot's happened in that time span you know you think about uh um you know three finger betty i think we recorded an album sometime around the last time we were all on the podcast together maybe it was like episode 200 so it would have been like something two, like that two yeah. years ago maybe and that's been like a thing that was i think you know that was I want to say like COVID, like right off the bat, but like since then, that was kind of like uh, coming out of that time span. Let's record an album, and then we just kind of backburnered it a little bit. A know? little bit, yeah. But so, other than that being a thing that like we've kind of been waiting on, like what else has been happening in, uh, in the Clint Wheelman area? I mean, you've been playing sleepover shows. Have you been like doing any other mood lighting with other bands? Um, other than that, yes, I have. Right. Uh, with one in particular. Yes. All right. So let's talk about that a little bit. What's what's the band you've been playing a lot of shows with lately? Uh, it's called Andy Jewell and the Blue Stem Players. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Jewell. Uh, I want to say like Owen O'Brien like had mentioned something about him once to me. And I was like, oh, cool. I wonder who this guy is. And uh, you guys all got in touch with one another. Yes. Yeah. It's been awesome jamming with freaking homeboy on the bass yeah <laughs> owen <laughs> yeah owen's a blast to play yeah he's, he's very so very fun, fun to, to play with yeah i think that's one of the funnest things about him is like just being able to share the stage with him he, he finds like a weird way maybe it's just musically to make like just make everything more fun you know for sure he's very exploratory with the uh, the way he approaches his bass playing the a lot of off the cuff sort of stuff and that's 
right down my alley. I like, I like playing that way on the drums as well. Yeah. I so like, it's just, yeah, it feels really natural. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because he'll like, uh, he'll like mimic rhythms or mimic notes or mimic other things like other people. Are yeah. Doing. He kind of has a percussive nature to how he plays yeah. and that's, that's really nice. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really funny. It, it allows him to just kind of like, I feel like that stuff where like off the stage, people don't know what's going on, but on the stage, like. I recall one time, I think all of us were playing a show with Jesse Wilson at like Copperhead and I was like playing a solo or doing something and then it was just like, well, me and Owen on the bass will just trade, you know, every eight here on this song or whatever and see what it sounds like. And so we're just trading bars or whatever and uh, he's just like mimicking everything I'm doing but he's doing it on a bass and it's like that's so funny that he's it just made me laugh so much that he did that a couple of times. He just like start off doing kind of what I was doing and then just like do it whatever and it's like... Ah, it's hilarious. I don't know if anybody like again out in the crowd knows like that's st- a lot of that stuff's just off the cuff. Just like, it is. I feel like this tonight, and it's it like, just comes from listening to a ton of music and having just a massive bank of songs going on in your head. You could draw from uh, basically at will mm-hmm. while you're in the middle of playing something. Yeah, the weirdest part about that, I feel like uh, like music in school kind of taught me that too because like i i still think about like oh i played trumpet in school so some of that trumpet stuff where it's just like uh some of the, sometimes that comes into into mind when i'm playing just a little bit you know and yeah. not necessarily the melodies that like a guitar you would think out of a guitar it's not as like common but still like uh i think about like a, that with you like having played like you know snare or marching drum or like uh you know you know the timpani or like something like yeah. that like did that ever like come across to you when you're playing the drums like oh snap i could do this oh yeah like uh i first started just hammering out stuff on the snare drum while we were all like warming up before band class in junior high Mm -hmm. for old tim miller and uh yeah i just keep uh hammering out stuff just off the top of my head based off of the you know the rudiments that you know he taught me in the one-on-one lessons that we had to leave class for Mm -hmm. and uh yeah from that it just turned into one i think it was after christmas break he sat everyone down and decided that uh jazz band was going to start for us in seventh grade yep and then yeah he just uh taught us what a rock beat was and what a swing beat was and the concept of what a fill is uh-huh. is basically do it on the fourth measure, more or less. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. When you get to the fourth measure, you just do whatever you want. Is more or less how he taught us to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so we go from that to you playing shows with Andy Jewell. I think we like discussed it's you and Owen O'Brien and Andy. Yeah, yeah. Owen actually uh, texted me and asked uh, if I wanted to play with Andy Jewell and think pretty soon after that i got some songs to learn and it's a completely different approach to playing because you have to be as like controlled as humanly possible and i kind of like having to flex different bring no brain muscles (laughs) Yeah. yeah it's uh it's I think about that with music a lot where like people are just like, well, if you can play music, you can play music with anybody. And it's like, well, it's, it's totally different though. Cause mm-hmm. there, there's, there's points where like, um, I think about that with like Jesse Wilson's music. It's just like, there are parts of certain songs where it has to be like this and it has to be to make it this song. Yeah. But the rest of it is just whatever you want. Yeah. And you can and, find your you know place to go yeah. crazy for a second and then come back <laughs> yeah you can extend bars make <laughs> solos longer whatever happens happens it's just kind of how you're feeling and like sometimes there's like other bands you play with where like we have this and it has to be very rigid mm-hmm. or, or like you know there are parts or it's more parts are ha- more defined in this yeah. or like I, I want it to sound like the studio album so this is definitely happen. more challenging <laughs> yes it's a di- it's a different muscle in your brain yeah. to flex you but, know Thankfully, they're all original songs. There's okay. not a lot of cover material. There's a couple. There's like a yes part, and uh, there's a, a Genesis part. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Set. That's cool. Two those are fun to play. Yeah, and again, this is like it sounds like a different style of music. I've seen a couple videos of you guys all playing together, and it sounds very, very huge. It sounds like a lot is going on. Yeah, it is fun. And uh, recently, we've added a keyboardist. Even better. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say I feel like I remember keyboards in in the songs that I went and listened to, and 
yeah, it's cool that you're going to have that live. It's that sounds like such a an amazing lineup. It adds quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. That's super cool. I mean, like that's another thing where I think about like growing as a person, and, and but like you think like the younger you, it's like would I have joined a band like this when I was younger? It's like when I was younger, I was pretty headstrong. I like these kind of things, and if someone or like I never thought I would join a band like this, or you know like those kind of things were like yeah. you know your musical talents over time like lend you to being like oh well i can also do this and it's like all right well let's dive in head first and see what happens that's a lot of the reason why i started going to the jam nights over in barnum because mm-hmm. i wanted to you know learn how to hang with you know whoever i could mm-hmm. <laughs> in just like that raw live completely off the top of the head sort of way and just seeing what kind of music you can make and having to work on that like control that it takes to you know it's it's easy for you know the whole group to kind of lose where the beat is when you, when you try to take it off in in wild directions yep so it's it's i don't know for the people like not listening like so for example with dark mirror or with three finger betty everything was very rigid like you and i played in a band called unity for a while together that was Mm -hmm. very rigid it had to be this way and this way and this way because that's just how the song went yeah you could kind of tinker a little bit but the timing was always for the most part here because everyone had to know where everyone else was going to be because it's intricate music to some extent for sure same thing with three finger betty maybe not as intricate but still just as yeah a lot of places to do whatever you want (laughs) yes yes but also you have to still be very rigid with the timing on certain things to, yeah. make, to make the songs happen whereas you know you, you play with other people like at the jams in barnum it's just like well we're gonna play you know this song by tom petty or whatever yeah. it is you know yeah it was awesome learning other people's original yes. songs that's a really fun thing to do yes. <laughs> so you start to do like you know we're gonna play this song but there's like well this solo can be whatever it happens oh yeah there's slide guitars play the play the solo for this i don't care it sounds good you know? yeah and just watch people you know nod yes. to whoever you know hey you know take this next little section and yeah. then not to another person yeah you take this section over here yeah it's it's very it's a very different muscle to flex than being on stage and just like knowing what's going to happen yeah because everyone knows when you're in like you know a band where everything's rigid this is what's going to happen so it, you can just kind of goof around a lot more on stage or yeah or like ham it up as i like to say it but like in those types of jamminess you have to kind of like make sure you're making eye contact exactly you got to pay attention to what everyone's doing at all times like yeah i just remember playing in barnum just eyes transfixed not even focused at all just to whoever was playing just so i could hear what they were <laughs> doing <laughs> yes it's it's that blank stare that everyone does where it's like i'm listening as hard as i can but my eyes are still looking to see if anybody turns their body towards me exactly because yeah. that means something's <laughs> happening because <laughs> yeah most of the time i'm just like looking at their arm i can see the back of their fretboard but i just can't see what their fingers are actually doing yep so you're just like staring at their wrist yep. <laughs> so if you know go higher you can try to and, you know try to compliment that in some kind of way yep if they uh a, a hand comes up that's not normally up it's like oh we're stopping here maybe it's like or they turn around oh yeah like, the break that comes out of nowhere that i like never stop for <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes the break is a fun spot for a, a fill you know and that's like we're jam nights i think it's funny because it's like well if two or three people know this but there's six people jamming on this song they don't like these people don't know where the break is so like maybe if we can get everyone except for these two ancillary people to stop like it'll still sound kind of cool because there'll be like a fill yeah. where there's not normally a fill and that's what a jam's all about yeah and then you know with more repetition the other people that don't stop will try to experiment with seeing what stopping can do yeah <laughs> and then sometimes it makes the song better or maybe not yeah. other times yeah exactly i mean that's that's the thing about going to jams is like you have to have that flexibility and availability for people to kind of goof around and, and sometimes not everything sounds good and you have to find a way to get around it or just keep going regardless just finding the sound i guess yes. is how they yeah. refer to that yeah so like the how much of that is in when you're playing with andy jewel is there some of that or is there not a whole lot of that or it's a pretty good mix uh the the songs are fairly rigid but he leaves a lot of uh options for interpretation oh cool like cool. some some sections can go a little bit uh extended just especially now that there's an extra instrument, just nods over to the keyboard and lets him go for a while. Yeah. And before the guitar solo happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, um, like how, like, so you got involved with Owen on this. Like, how would you describe 
this music because I think I just described it as like it's it's big. If there's a lot going on, I didn't want to say like like the 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 very short thing I would say to just describe it to everyone is just like like a Pink Floydy ish kind of. Big, I guess it's big. yeah, it sort of has the vibe. It's that bigness, of yeah. It, you know, at least I've heard Andy describe it as singer songwriter mixed with seventies prog, more or less. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I could I could definitely feel that. I could definitely feel that for sure. So like I don't know what you would describe other bands that were kind of like it. Like there, it's it's like a. The progness was like kind of dreamscapey, but kind of like again, like you said, there's like a little bits of rigidity that make yeah. the songs their own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a big King Crimson fan. Oh, cool, cool, yeah. cool. That's another band where it's like this band's gonna be heavy and crazy, and you're like, this band's actually like way weirder than I thought they were gonna be. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, quite a bit. Uh, there's a there's a few of those out there. Kiss would be like another one I like to point at. You like you listen to some songs, you're like. This song's pretty nice, and you're like, "Yeah, that's Kiss." And you're like, "Kiss? Those guys with the makeup that are all like, ah." It's like, "Yeah, that's Kiss." And it's like, oh. "Yeah, Hard Luck Woman." Yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Kiss. You know, they look all crazy. You know, <laughs> you know. But anyways, yeah. So like, uh, that's one of the cool things I think about it. Like, uh, the different styles of music. You know, it's it comes back to the the jams. You've played in a couple different styles of bands, and and Moonlit with a few bands, and now you're in this band that just has what I I don't know big sounds coming out. And mm-hmm. It's it's really kind of neat. You know, how many shows do you play with Andy? I've seen you play a handful with him. It's I mean, uh, I, I once mean, every two months or so. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen you, but I, like online, I see you play shows. Yeah, we them. actually have one coming up on uh, next this coming Friday. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So this, uh, I think this episode will come out after that. So where is the best place people can find the information? Does Andy have like uh, social medias and stuff like that? Yes, he does. All right. So, so on Facebook and maybe Instagram. I'm not even sure. All right. We're going to find those and we're going to put them in the description section <laughs> so everyone can find them. Uh, so what are some of the places you've played with them? Um, Cause I think like over by, is it over by Cherokee maybe? Like, yeah. Like, uh, Little you, Swan Lake. Okay. Yeah. That's a, it's just a barn and it's, they kept it pretty close to <laughs> like, authentic and original Mm -hmm. and have a bunch of just old school stuff from back in the day all over just that makes it it's like walking into a time machine that's crazy that's awesome i mean that makes me think about the old barn out at you know my parents old place so they're you know that'd be that'd be kind of fun you know kind of rekindle a little childhood memories for a lot of people i think and because of that i think uh, we had to play like as quietly as humanly possible yes like i had to get these cool rod type things Mm-hmm. just to you know quiet down my cymbal strikes and whatnot yeah and uh yeah that added a layer of challenge and yeah it was really fun and uh my sound recordings turned out really well for him oh, too cool cool yeah is that something i guess like uh is is this band dynamically different than other bands that you've played with like uh, uh yeah i suppose there's quite a lot of peaks and valleys going on with the with like dynamics and whatnot yeah yeah i mean like because a lot of bands we play in like three finger betty it's just like one volume the whole way through the whole yeah song, yeah you know? sometimes it comes down a little bit but most of the time it's just like rah, 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 rah. yeah yeah it'll stop and build you know <laughs> stuff like that but otherwise yeah it's it's very in your face we're like this kind of music Again, I don't want to just point at Pink Floyd, but like that's the easiest prog to digest that everyone knows, like Rush kind of stuff or like, you know, yeah. things like, you know, those were the bands that were influenced by the 70s bands, but they came out in, you know, the 80s, even Pink Floyd was 70s. But either way, you know, like that's kind of the the pocket sort of of what's going on here. So it made me think like, you know, this is probably a different beast in that sense for you instead of just rocking through the whole song, you know. Exactly. Yeah, I've always been a fan of old school 50s and 60s psychedelic kind of stuff so yeah it's always been something i've I've wanted to try i guess i've just been listening to oldie station for years at this point now yeah yeah i mean you, you it's so funny we like we would pull up to punk shows and you'd be like blasting oldies out of your car hauling like the biggest drum set ever and i'm like you know sometimes yeah i'm sometimes playing like a tweed speaker and a tweed bass <laughs> tweed bass guitar you know uh thing with me and it's just like okay this is hilarious like i know it looks like we're gonna come in here to do like wild stuff but it's like I just pull up I, I next to the door at the underground rock stop blasting little gto <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> i love it that's so cool in my toyota corolla oh it's so fun yeah it was 100 percent. like that's that's you so so it's not like this is like foreign in concept to you it's i mean like it's just not what you've played a whole lot of is, is music that involves yeah. like you know maybe 
doing something a little bit just, just you know just quiet it down here a little bit it's not that you can't do it you know because you you played in high school so you're you're very well of what dynamics are yeah. you know so it's just with metal and punk it's not really as much yeah you know yeah, i think the element uh that i like the most about andy jules he goes into like odd time signatures a lot of the time oh cool so that's another like muscle to flex that it is yeah that's not necessarily something you haven't done but it's something you just need to do more of. Uh, yeah i want it's yeah it's so much better when you're able to do it in like a do it live sort of environment oh yeah for sure oh and that'd be fun you know like i that's another fun thing about playing with other musicians is it's just like oh this person prefers to cut stuff up like this and you play enough with them you kind of get used to where they cut notes up or cut measures up or or decide to color the solos the most or yeah. the least and you can fill in on the pockets and stuff like that around them you know and it, it takes time and it you know but you can still get used to it and it's it's an enjoyable thing to do with, like you know with people with other musicians yeah yeah for sure so again we'll have uh all the links for andy jewel uh down below that's a fun one that's a, that's a good one so definitely check that out recent he recently had either at least a a single but maybe an album come out not terribly long ago yeah i believe that's true all right definitely check that out i remember going through a handful of the songs on there and just being like this guy's making music in iowa that's pretty wild yeah he's got several records so he's been knocking it out for at least 10 plus years that's wild yeah definitely check it out um we'll see if i can find some links for that maybe i'll toss those in there too but uh yeah check them out online andy jewel there's going to be some links down below for sure for sure for sure any other things about uh andy we want to mention on before we like kind of skirt past that or he's just got an awesome group of musicians with him yeah definitely does himself included for like, sure yeah it, it takes uh i feel like it takes a, a different kind of brain to think of music that big not that he's like again not that he's like saying this is what everyone has to play but at the same time he's He's got the mindset to make, you know, he's, he's bringing the canvas, basically. Yeah. You know, it's a different type of canvas than most people are using. Yeah, he just never stops creating. So that's basically what you got to do. That's what you gotta, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just don't stop. I mean, if you just keep going, it, uh, look at what you can do. Um, so that's uh, me saying that having quit the podcast. For two years. <laughs> but still, like, uh, that's, you know, some of the best musicians are the people that just keep creating. It's like... You know, if you create one song a month, you have an album a year. And, you know, even if not all of those are absolute bangers, like, you know, whatever. It's like, well, mm -hmm. then what's the option to get around that? It's like, well, then some months make two or three songs and then bring them to the table. And then you can have more of a choice to cut from and find ones that you actually enjoy or something. Yeah. And by then, you know, if you've been playing them all year long, they'll change into what you want them to change into and blah, 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 blah. You know, like, that's just, <laughs> that's just kind of how it goes. But yeah just keep creating and that's uh that's cool it's cool that he's here you know and he's uh, probably not somebody that everyone has heard of uh listening to the podcast but definitely somebody that everyone oh yeah out. yeah he lives over near remsen iowa no crazy yeah. yep northeastern type i guess yeah it's yeah i've never been out there it's a beautiful part of the state yeah point at that on a map if you know where that's at you know, <laughs> kidding. that's like saying i'm from humboldt and people are like what and you're like kind of by fort Knox. Oh, okay i know where that's yeah. at, you know so <laughs> yeah this is basically you go to pocahontas but then go another hour and then turn a little bit north uh yes yeah, so north northwest side of the state yes oh yes. i said northeast didn't yeah. i yes so that's uh the town again i would point out would be like cherokee because i think it was like a he used to do jams over there yeah or i've, I've going played on. at uh sort of an outdoor stage like in basically right off of main street it seemed like oh cool cool just, cool, cool. Yeah, part of the old main street that had been cleared out so it's just buildings on either side there's like an alleyway mm -hmm. sort of scenario with a pretty nice little stage out there yeah and that was a really fun sh show to play. Yeah, that's for sure, man. I, uh, I was going to say, I know there's sometimes some jams over in Cherokee. I don't know exactly more about them, but research them online. I don't know if they're still happening or if uh, that's a thing. But it'd be It seems fun. like something they do with regularity. Yeah, I'd like to go over there and check more of those out. That could be kind of fun. You never know what would happen. So, uh, you know, there needs to be more jams. Like that Barnum jam, like you said, that was one that was a big one for a yeah. long time for a lot of people. And that was a big growing period for a lot of people whoever uh, came through because uh, yes. on, on any given night you could be playing with some of the best players in the area oh 100 percent. and then sometimes you're playing with people who are brand new and that's i mean that's kind of the fun of it and i think going to the jams that jeremy ober hosts that are st have started back up uh, oh yeah at uh second floor of the eagles ah yes um, that is another fun one to go to because jeremy tries his best to put people up there with people that he 
knows they haven't played with before or mm-hmm. something you know it's just like hey get up here and just show them what you can do on their song you know and he makes different groups of people that you know you wouldn't normally make yeah and that's kind of the fun part about going to that one is it's it's a little challenging at the same time yeah and you're kind of like seeing the future kind of unfold yeah <laughs> with people learning how to how to jam more or less yeah i mean like it starts out with a regular band and then he just folds a new person in and a new person in and a new person in and before you know it it's like completely different it's like well we got a singer songwriter with a drummer bassist and guitarist that have never played with him before yeah and then you just bring in a different bassist and then you play two more songs and a different singer songwriter and then a different drummer and a different guitarist after Mm -hmm. a while and it's just it's wild it just keeps changing over time and you never really get that time to get comfortable with anyone but it's like it's just all fun the whole time if you make it fun you know so Uh, that's that's another one of those that's that's pretty fun so yeah jam nights for sure uh so check those out for sure uh, yeah check out if there's any jam nights in your area i know there's a bunch in des moines or at least there were there probably still is uh totally worth checking out yeah but holy cow um des moines yeah let's uh let's uh spin off on this one des moines got like i, I don't know if, since the last time i podcasted but like places like things have disappeared or changed vaudeville muse not here anymore yeah yep. uh gas lamp gas lamp's gone yeah gone. no more gas lamp um so what other places uh boggs hole, boggs hole yeah that was a little tough one to lose that was a rough one uh is like the underground rock sh- shop type place is uh something like that and still uh or? i haven't uh heard of rat putting on any shows but last time anything happened at the mall over Merle Hay Mall specifically mm-hmm. is at the Dark Slide. Oh yes, the, Dark Slide does shows yep, every now and then. Yep. Those are fun that shows. That was a really fun one. Yeah. Dude, we played <laughs> at that show, and it was there was part of like a little part of the inside of me that was just like this. Like if I was a kid, this would be what I would have wanted. Exactly. Yeah. Like we watched those DVDs and those VHSs <laughs> of all like those, those skaters and those punk bands, and everyone just kind of hanging out and just having fun yeah and we showed up and played this show and i honestly was like i don't know what to think i don't know what to think it's the middle of winter it was cold outside yep freezing cold and uh i remember like packing all the stuff in and just kind of standing around and being like whatever and then it's just like there's like a hundred kids in here not kids but like so like teenage kids through like yeah up to like 30 years old you know yeah it was weird it it was awesome actually like it was cool to see young like young kids yeah hungry to fucking see some you know live (laughs) rock and roll in their face oh a hundred percent you know and like i said if i was a teenager this was the stuff i was just like whoa this is so cool this is so punk rock i want to go to one of these shows i had a show in a skate shop that's so cool (laughs) you know like this is the stuff you see online when there's like oh this big band played at a you know sam goodies in the corner like you know (laughs) this is this is that you know exactly yeah it was a very very cool vibe yeah they do shows every now and then so be sure to check them out online because they do post their shows online when they do them so uh but yeah it was like a rare opportunity for that kind of age group to even see a show like that just with how the early show late show kind of split happens at the venues in des moines oh yeah because that's a thing where it's like before a certain time it has to be this age and before after you know after a certain time it has to be that unless unless it's a venue that does this and it's usually like alcohol is the kicker in a lot of those places and blah 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 but that's just you know city ordinances and laws and state and whatever going on so um that's just the way it, it goes but you know it that's is. another thing for like you said uh you would go places and you play an early show and it's like if you play the early show it's like you might not get as many older people going to the show but you might get more younger people and it seemed like the early shows were less and less full there for a while yeah i yeah there was nothing really for him to do once 9 p.m. hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was kind of weird because, like, you'd go play an early show, and it's like, well, let's see who's who's going to be out and about. And it's, you know, it's not as many people as you think it would be, but it was cool to go to that Dark Slide show and just be like, this is, this is what I remember. Because uh-huh. I remember, like, you know, being a teenager and, and coming down to some shows in Des Moines, you know, or, like, very, very late teens or, like, oh, super yeah. early 20s, you know, and coming down here. And just <laughs> I went to see Straight out of Junior High at Old House of Bricks. <laughs> oh, yeah, see stuff like that. I remember yeah. going to, you know, like, Vaudeville to see City Sleeps and, like, some other bands, you know, and it's just like, this is cool. Like, this is this is what it is, you know, and I I just feel like there was more people at those shows, and I'm, I don't think I'm romanticizing it, but... Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, so like there's not a terribly large amount of venues in Des Moines left and it's kind of sad and hearing that people are getting all mad at Woolies now uh, is kind of just like yeah we can't we can't lose another one yeah we can't lose one that size because I'll tell you what the, the difference between venues in town is like there was like the Fremont and Hull which mm -hmm. were like kind of DIY stages those were the best places for like people to play their first show yeah cut your teeth get good make sure people come out but also like they seem to be very well attended you know mm -hmm. and then there's places that have you know sound guys and it used to be you know or people running sound and lights and a, a big stage and whatever you know not, not that fremont and boggs whole avenue tavern didn't have those but like there was those size of places like lefties uh gas lamp um you know vaudeville muse i'd toss in there you know there's a mm -hmm. few of those places that were there and it's like well now a lot of those places are disappearing yeah the next step up is woolies and yep. the next step up from there is an arena so if you're <laughs> so, yeah. so we have like tier one most of tier two is gone and we only have one tier three venue in town basically mm -hmm. and you can't take that away from people because there's bands in town that use there's bands in the state that yeah, use that yeah we're not talking about like touring band comes in and they open up for them we're talking about like bands that are all from iowa will like get together and book a show at that place and fill it up with people yeah and so we need we need that we venue. need more places to actually do that yeah yes yeah, so we need those venues you know we, you can't delete all of the middle because how are you supposed to go from the fremont to filling up wells fargo yeah like, there's no place in the middle to go i guess there's a lot of sort of singer songwriter type places to play there's yes. a ton of those yes um you know xbk is another one that's, that's oh pretty yeah cool. you know that they're playing a lot of shows there's chances for local people to get up there and play a lot too so you know I, i'm sorry for all the ones i haven't mentioned but it's it's sad that there's like it just seems to be this epidemic here that's just like man the music's dying and it, it shouldn't be but like again i think also the music scene is leaning a lot more towards singer songwriters definitely is yeah a uh, person with an acoustic and then somebody accompanying them sitting in the corner of a room with a speaker and not bothering anyone kind of deal sort of yeah you know or like a, a bar looking for jukebox music at, at night so you're just playing like you know bon jovi and def leppard all night or whatever it happens to be you yeah. know uh, those types of cover bands you know and you know nothing wrong with that either though you know it's exactly just original music's not not really there i think like the way that people around the four dodge area not want to say like get away with it but they they start with covers and then fold in originals you know and, mm -hmm. and you can eventually win people over with your originals exactly by doing yeah that. so there's there's one way to do it but i also stand you know we talked about it earlier there's so many different ways to try and do music with different bands and different things so understandable so different venues also have different like rules and stuff some of them won't let you play any covers you know and it's you have to go in there with all originals and it's just a different type of thing but <laughs> uh, again that's just it just we uh in des moines can't lose more music venues it's, that would be that'd be rough it would be yeah yeah so there's a band we used to play with that would come through Des Moines every now and then called The Rumors, and they would always just, like, absolutely pack the place pretty much wherever we went. And I don't know how The Rumors were just, like, they just for some reason thought we were a fun band, and they're like, yeah, you guys can open up for us. <laughs> and we would always be, like, the very first band to play before The Rumors. Sometimes there'd be a band in the middle. Every now and then we'd be the middle band, but it was just like, all right, we're going to go hang out with The Rumors every time they're in Des Moines. Almost Like, it was almost every time they came through. It was yeah. Like, let's let's play, play a show with her. Heck, yeah. You know, and if we couldn't, it would be, like, like one of the the sister bands or whatever of three finger betty like the sleepover or, yeah. or the shit kickers or whatever you know it was <laughs> it was or like one that we would recommend out or something but uh yeah the rumors were so fun to play with and that ended up you know we kind of like i would say like built a relationship with them but they knew who we were and we yeah you know, they knew who us they you know, were we, fond of the song too fat to fuck <laughs> yes yes we'd play we'd play shows with them you know in the waterloo cedar falls area and stuff with you know every now and then and so that you know that ended up just they were looking for a drummer i'm sure you guys are knowing where this is going uh, <laughs> somebody tries out for the rumors yeah i just you know john actually from three finger betty uh just texted me about something he had just seen so i guess he might have gotten the news rather early in the process mm -hmm. but uh yeah i just got that bit of news and then shot him an email and like it was yeah it just kind of went from there yeah and it was basically uh <laughs> instantaneous they were like fuck yeah we want you in the band <laughs> yeah well i mean it's just 
again, it's the drum styling that they're used to is what is basically the middle of everything you've ever played. Metal to punk. It's like, a mix of, yeah, basically a, a lot of the stuff that I grew up loving. Yeah. And so, yeah, it seems like a perfect fit from a musical standpoint. Yeah. I mean, it's like the two genres you played the most of. If you go in the middle, it's rock and roll, I would say. Yeah. You know, like that's perfect. Rock, you know, and that's what, you know, the rumors are is uh, I would just say like, think of like your classic and i don't want to just like pin it on them because they always get this it's like your joan jet type rock and roll just band. yeah yeah and, loud fucking nasty rock and roll in your face in your face and it's uh it's that classic stuff you all love but i don't want to call it classic rock because it's not you, you can't just blanket statement it you have to check it out it's totally fun stuff we always had a blast playing with them with three finger yes. and and i think one of the funnest part was just like standing there just being like i would just stand there mouth agape just like everybody loves these guys <laughs> they love them so much yeah you know and some of it is obviously the marketing but like th- people are singing the songs exactly and yeah it's, and it's like i've never seen these people at any shows in des moines and here they are at the show in des moines filling this place up and they're singing all the songs of this band that's not from des moines yeah and it's like that's freaking cool to me you know to some extent this band that's from the waterloo ish area yes. has exploded so much that they're known in other towns it's pretty awesome they've built up quite a following yeah the fans are (laughs) very big fans of what they do (laughs) yes and they've been around for how long do you think uh nine years nine years yeah i was gonna say because like even when way back in the infancy of three finger betty i remember playing a show with them Mm -hmm. like sometime when i was like 2018 or something like that maybe yeah, earlier <laughs> yeah yeah because i think it was 2017 maybe when i joined the band i don't remember if it was 17 18 but it's been a long time which is kind of crazy to think you know but uh anyways yeah, yeah that was apparently a long time ago at this point yeah which you know you turn around and look and i, I feel like it's the covid time warp it's like that's that. now, yeah we lost like a good two years or more <laughs> yeah it just accordion time it's like nothing happened then all of a sudden when it, like stuff started happening you're like oh it's two years later yeah and i felt like rip van winkle you know <laughs> like oh man all my friends they moved yeah where did everybody go it's like, like you woke up at the end of a weird dream yeah and so two years had gone by it's a uh, you know what is it new heart it's the end of new heart when he wakes up and it's just oh i had the weirdest dream <laughs> Come back to bed. you know oh my gosh so uh yeah so you try do you have to try out for him or do i'm sure there's a tryout process you can't just like walk in and be like i'm the drummer and then you just like don't learn anything oh yeah like, yeah <laughs> they they accepted me into the fold and then uh gave me a a stack of recordings to learn is basically their entire new record plus a couple songs from their old records cool and yeah i just spent a month or two just burning those into my brain just never listening to anything but that and then whenever i had the opportunity going down and and trying to like play with it going in my ear uh, but yeah, it just took a took a month or two to get the songs to a playable state, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one where like you start to pick up on. I did that not terribly long ago, where it's like you just have a playlist. Here's forty songs on it. You just listen to it on repeat, and then every now and then you're just like, oh, I remember this song. Oh, I remember this song. Yeah. And you know, like every couple of songs, you're like, oh, I remember this part. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it like, just like flashes into your mind. It's like, okay, yeah, here and, we go. Until every single song, you're just like, oh, I know this song, and it's like, it's, okay, these are probably this is probably the name of the song, right? And you're like, yeah, that's the name of the song. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like, okay, I got yeah. it. <laughs> That whole time you're trying to like every now and then just sit down and play along to it. It's not, you know, sometimes it's like, this is rough. And other times it's like, no, I'm getting it. Yeah. You know, that's, and then it goes into this. Yeah. It, yep. Yeah. It's, that's super fun. It's, it's kind of frustrating and tough when you're trying to do it on a time crunch, but it's also like really fun to do. It's really rewarding. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. When you nail it, when it hits, it hits hard, man. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, it's worth all the like fumbling around to get to the sweet spot. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. For sure. That, uh, I hope the rumors gals are listening to it. That sounds like a lyric. Um, <laughs> it's worth all the fumbling around if you get to the sweet spot. <laughs> all right. So, That's good. Book it. Um, no, anyways, so <laughs> check them out. They're online everywhere. No, when did you start playing with the rumors? Um, the first time we got together was uh, dis- early December last year, 2023. 2023. So we're, we're coming up on a year, basically. I guess yeah. we are, yeah. That's wild. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it also feels like it's been a long time, you know? I think uh, just a couple of days ago, it was like 
a year after I'd like sent the email or something like that. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. So we're coming up on the one year anniversary of all this stuff. Like, how many shows have you played with them? It seems like just about every weekend. Quite not, a lot. Not, not every weekend, but just about every weekend you're doubling up on shows, you know? It seems like it, yeah. We've got to be in the like 50 range at least by the end of the year. That's cool. That's That's a good amount of shows. It is, yeah. And we're not talking about like 50 shows in Iowa, every show's in Iowa. Like oh, no. You're uh, leaving the state to play these shows, right? Yeah, doing a lot of Midwest type of traveling, getting up to Minnesota and Wisconsin, a little bit over in uh, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. We played like extremely rural Kansas. That show ended up like we went in with all the doubts in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it ended up being like an extremely fun show because the people there were just the best. Sometimes those are the best. I mean, there's been a few times with Three Finger Betty where we played shows in small towns, and it's just like, oh, they're starving for this. They, exactly. They you can tell when loved it. You can tell when you're like changing people's lives, like for real. Yeah. And I feel like that happened more than one time that evening. I recall a couple times playing shows with Unity, and people they were so blown away by what they had seen, where they'd just be like, "So where's your next show at on tour?" And it's like. Yeah. No, we're just a regular band, man. <laughs> yeah. Like we have jobs and stuff, you know. <laughs> like no, the, the, it was so cool to them. They were just like, "You guys, you know, you're rock stars to them, you know." Yeah. And those are the fun things about going to those small towns, uh, you know, far away. Sometimes it's like, "Well, look at this," you know, and they're just like, "Holy crap, we've never seen anything like this." this yeah, crazy. yeah. Like the thought had never even entered their head that you could start a band and book shows on the road <laughs> yeah and do this stuff you know and that's one of the cool things is like they book a lot of shows and it's not like all of them are just like oh we're going to the you know tiny town kansas you know like middle of nowhere nebraska you know the, you know bottom of blah 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 and search and search iowa yeah. or whatever and there's there's been some pretty decent decently attended shows yeah, I think you were showing me like a picture from not terribly long ago at a like Surly Brewing Company. That was last night, actually. Yeah, yeah as up we're in Minneapolis, as we're recording this. Yeah, that's that's freaking cool. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. There's a lot of people there, and those are sometimes you know like you go to those shows and it's like, I get it. It's not like we have like ten thousand people in an arena, you know, playing. But you know, it's like when you have somewhere between you know five hundred ish people there, whatever. I don't know. I don't want to sit down and count them all, but it's just like that's a lot of people that are like vibing on what you're doing. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it ended up being a very receptive audience to to what we brought to the table. Is basically a perfect fit. Yeah, I mean, it's. I bet it's like also really rewarding knowing you like you put all the work in and you're doing all this stuff to go out with a band that's like also putting all the work in to go book these shows at places like that. You know, exactly. They're kind of they're on the rise, so to speak. So it it kind of felt a lot of ways like I kind of strapped myself to a rocket headed for the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like the in the music world, there's like bands that play local shows. You know, if you're playing all originals, and then there's bands that like tour a little bit, but you know, might f have found some sort of backing. And then there's like, I'm in the middle of getting some sort of like weird mid-level record deal. And then you're like big time, you know, if you want to, tr you know, travel up the ladder, that's like, yeah. and they're kind of in that, you know, and they're in phase two to phase three, kind of got record deals, something sort of. You yeah. Know, a lot of venue owners know who they are and like them and want them to come back. Yes. You know, and it's just like, they're just waiting for some, the right person to see them and say, all right, here, we're signing you to this kind of deal. Mm -hmm. and it's not like that's, you know, Again, I'm not trying to like jinx them or anything, but that's just kind of like the area of the band they are because they do like mini tours around places. How, mm -hmm. like, what was you did a mini tour with them, didn't you? It was like X amount of days, yeah, or... it was like nine dates or something in 10 or so days. Wow, going out with the super suckers. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's that's a I mean, that, again, we're going back to childhood. Like, when you're a kid, that's the dream, you know? Like, I want to do a band. I want to get it in the van and, and go to the place and yeah. you know, not sleep enough and, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. Or, you know, yeah, drive six hours, sleep four or five hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. That'd be so fun, you know? Yeah. I'm sure it's uh, not as fun the older we're getting, but, uh, you know, at the same time. We're probably not making the mistakes we would have made when we were younger. Probably like actually sleeping when we have the opportunities to sleep. Yeah. And uh, not just, e you know, eating candy bars and milkshakes all day long or whatever it is. And I guess a good thing, one of the good things about the rumors thing is they kind of do like long weekends. Mm -hmm. Like it's only a few times a year that they go out for like a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good workflow at the at the current moment. 
Yeah, it fits into everything pretty well. You yeah. know, it's not too disrupting to a, a normal life. Exactly, yeah, because they both run and work at a tattoo shop. Oh, okay. Another, Ruckus Rose Tattoo in oh, Waterloo. <laughs> again, awesome. It's just like they're, it, you know, it's that thing with musicians. It's like by any means necessary. It's like we're going to do tattoos because we love this and we're going to play music because we love that. They do and, great work too. Yeah. Uh, I remember you saying like, eh, I think it was a Facebook post. You're like I might need to uh, hit one of them up for a tattoo over my next tattoo, you know? So yeah, yeah definitely. Those guys are, uh, they, they do good work. Those gals, I should say, you know, <laughs> definitely. Um, the Goyles. <laughs> the Goyles. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It's so, it's also so fun and refreshing to be like, Oh, they're not just up there goofing around. They can actually play the instruments. Oh, yeah. They can know? lay the fuck down. And yeah. It's, it's awesome that, I, yeah, I can go crazy myself and they can keep up with it. No problem. Yes. <laughs> I, that's another thing I remember at Jam Nights. You were talking about that. Like, oh, let's do some of this stuff and cut loose a little bit. And then you're just like, whoop, they're not ready for that. Yeah. And you have to pull the reins back Yeah, you quick. try to break into something. You try to take it up a notch, but everyone kind of just wants to yeah. stay where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do some eighth note triplets in this fill. And people are like, wait, what the hell's going on? Like, I'm all used to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, I'm going to take what you're doing, but like turn it into a triplet in some kind of way. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, can't. Nope. Wait, what are we doing? Everyone just kind of like turns around and looks like, okay. I'll, I'll go back. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah. But it's but it's nice to know that you can actually, again, like when you're playing with the gals, that's uh, you know one of those things where... Um, it's nice to know that they're actually like proficient enough at their instruments and they're actual musicians again. Exactly. Yeah. They write awesome songs and they fucking, it's just mostly about road experiences and people. It's like very three finger Betty, I guess <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people songs. <laughs> yeah. I want to say that like, that's the thing where like, people that's the first thing they're gonna turn their nose up at it's just like just chicks with guitars so it's like no they can actually play like i'd love to play in a rock band with any of them like, Fuck the, yeah yeah it'd be fun you know and that's uh i don't know that's just my opinion so go check it out for sure it's it's uh again one of those things where you're, you're going out you're playing shows like on the tour with them uh i don't say like tour but like you said long extended weekends sometimes two three four shows maybe yeah you know uh usually a double shot at least if you can get away with it mm -hmm. So, like, one of the things I remember talking to you about when you first, like, joined the band, and I was like, oh, like, how do you feel about this? And so, like, do you travel with the band? I believe you said yes. Yes. Okay, so you're tr probably, I'm just assuming, traveling all in one vehicle. Yeah, I drive up to Waterloo, uh, park at their shop, and then just move my stuff from one van to another. All right, so you're all traveling in a van with all of the stuff? Yep. Or there's no trailer? No, no trailer or anything. Okay, so you have limited space, mm -hmm. and usually your drum set would take up your entire <laughs> Toyota Corolla. Yes, the entire one, not so, even a passenger. So are you strapping the whole thing to the roof, or what are we doing with the whole drum set? Oh, uh, I, to fit it in the rumors van, I had to, to pare it down back to... Uh, one kick and one rack. <laughs> uh, if, if we're really quiet, we can hear every sound guy in Des Moines for the last 15 years cheering <laughs> really loud. <laughs> and right when I got my own kick mics, too. Oh, bummer. That's <laughs> but, bummer. but it still, you know, makes it an option if I want to bust it out again. That's true. That's true. I left marks on all the racks, so I think I can approximate where everything used to be. <laughs> nice. Yeah, for sure. You just take a couple pictures and mark it all off and say, well, we'll just go from there. Mm hmm. So, for people that don't know, or this is the first time listening to Clint talk and they don't know what the deal's <laughs> all about, uh, we're talking Neil Pert size drum kit. Not, I'm just goofing around. It's, it's yeah, five toms, two kicks. There's not really symbols everywhere, but they exist, I suppose. Yeah, it's like you know, five, six symbols. Yeah, you know, kick, snare, or double kick, a snare, five toms, and a handful of symbols. Yeah, yep. So it's not like it's monstrous, but it's, it's like you took one and a half drum sets and mushed them together basically yeah kind of yeah yeah just a bevy of toms to to experiment with and just you know color the music in you know a different way than you could with just the same old four piece yeah exactly and i i understand the concept of like doing that because you know when we were growing up it was like I like these bands and those bands and like, you know, obviously Iron Maiden's a big influence on both of us, you know, yeah. so it's one of those things where you're like, well, Nick, you know, Nico did this, so I'm going to do this. And exactly. That's a, what he does looks like a lot of fun and the stuff that's going through my head has that in it. So I need to get this yes. <laughs> to so match we, what's going on in my head. We need to do this. We need to do this for sure. So uh, you, you have to parse everything down from that 
to a smaller kit. What's the yep. smaller kit look like now? It's it's a four piece. All right. But I managed to get so, it all concentrated onto a single rack. So kick snare three tom. Yep. Okay. So it's just like your regular rock kit. Yes. You got the double kick on there now. Yep. I had to convert my uh, single pedals back to a double pedal. Did it work? Did it go back together? All oh right? yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, working out pretty well. My my left foot actually works now, so it's not quite as difficult to play <laughs> oh wow what's what do you mean i just you know worked it out enough oh, okay to where i can do double kick stuff a little easier it's okay. not quite the struggle it used to be oh, okay oh because it's you you're on the if you're playing that way you're actually hitting the lever that's on the shit so you have to like push it a little bit harder yeah yeah, yeah for the secondary pedal just there's a lot more energy involved just because the mechanism involved yeah and yeah okay. it's, it's right. not really like one-to-one movement between the feet i gotcha okay okay i'm picking up what you're putting down here so so it's like you came back to it you feel like you're a little bit more confident at it maybe yeah yeah i've uh, been grinding it out a lot of what's helped is being in electric assault that's been uh basically exactly what i needed <laughs> in my life at the time when it started yeah and it just brought me back to the old like dark mirror mindset of just making balls to the wall heavy metal songs again and i like the extra workout involved from having to like practice the songs over and over oh yeah that's <laughs> it's really good for the chops i was driving down here thinking about that like every time i drive down to either play a show with you or do something with you i'm like man clint just every time we play or practice he gets cardio in a lot of it <laughs> yeah. like it's free cardio this man's gonna live forever it's just crazy to me so <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you go f- from the big kit, I would just call it the big kit, to the small kit, the reg- yeah. or the regular kit, you know, I wouldn't call it a small kit by any means, because there's people that play smaller kits, but... Exactly, yeah. You dumb it all down, did it take a little bit of adjusting? Yeah, I guess it was kind of like riding a bike again, going, yeah. and that's, you know, with the jam nights, that's how oh, yeah. everything was with that, so I had already, that was what actually ended up being a really like it was like a snag <laughs> like a barrier i had to get over uh it's first doing the the barnum jams because i just instinctively muscle memory styled like play it like i'm playing my drum set and my sticks are just like hitting the rims and yeah. nothing at all a hundred percent yeah because it's not like it's almost like having guitars that have completely different measurements i know we're talking like you know fender gibson is slightly different but whatever it's like it's not like riding a bike with a drum set because things you could put them in a completely different place mm-hmm. when you're using a house kit it's like you don't have a choice yeah and maybe things only go to certain places like the floor tom was like a literal tom on the floor almost at that yes place. so like it's like oh i can't put this anywhere near where it'd be convenient to hit it but i just have exactly to know. you gotta just train your arm to go all the way down yeah all the way the down the back. <laughs> it's over here somewhere you know so to move from your first kit you know uh, so your first kit was basically this kit we're using right now then again yes i traded the high tom for the highest tom Mm -hmm. i think just because uh i can nest them all into the larger cases and just have it all in my kick drum case yeah that makes sense yeah so do you think it's kind of weird that like it was like a necessity thing that brought you back to using a smaller kit or are you like it's definitely like, necessity because i miss miss the uh the large kit is that something you're gonna bust out for shows again <laughs> for the large kit oh yeah do you bust it out down here in the basement or i haven't yet honestly okay it's it's still still just been the the pared down kit since i guess the super suckers tour i think is the week that i <laughs> grinded that process out it took longer than i thought to yeah i'm sure to figure out the right setup to where things weren't just in like an unnatural position yes because that's the thing that's kind of weird is like those racks it seems like well i can just put anything on here anywhere as long as the racks here and it's like well it's not like drums aren't always that easy yeah because, like, it takes can, a lot of planning because <laughs> you can put stuff in certain places and it's like I, I'm not even a drummer and I've found it's like well when these are hooked up and they're hooked up this way like the way you hit them and they bounce it does, I don't even like it I'd rather have it over here on this side mm-hmm. I can't imagine being an actual drummer and being like I have to have the angle of this be this because it just it's better you just have to trust me for me hitting it it's better yeah it's, it's just all how they visualize it in their head and yeah if it if what's in front of you doesn't match what's going on in your head there's kind of like that 
uh, you know, of that conflict going on. Yeah. Well, yeah, you you try to play one way, but you have to focus more on like concentrating on how the layout actually is in front of you visually, instead of just like closing your eyes and playing. Yeah, no, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, we talked a little bit about the rumors. We got Andy Jewell in there. Uh, definitely check them both out. Two completely different styles of music. Yes. Yes. Uh, Three Finger Betty. We've mentioned them, but that's been most of the past episodes. We've discussed a lot. Of oh that. yeah. So if you want more Three Finger Betty talk, maybe go back to episode 200, I think, was Three Finger Betty. That was yeah. all of us talking together. So, And maybe um, number one as well. Uh, yes, that was the very <laughs> first person ever to come on the podcast right here. So uh, other than episode zero, which was like just a test episode more yeah. than anything. So, the proof of concept show. Yeah, yes, exactly. So we've talked through three of those bands, uh, three bands, I guess, basically that you're involved in a lot. We mentioned also the Sleepover. You play shows with them, mm-hmm. which, uh, again, it's like Three Finger Betty. We're not playing as many shows because John broke his hand. Yep. So that yields no guitar playing. And same goes with the Sleepover. <laughs> yeah, that happened in the Sleepover, too. Well, the John is in the Sleepover. That is true. So it kind of put both bands on ice for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but it also, like, uh, it's kind of crazy that you had these other projects in your back pocket like you're playing shows with the rumors it's like well broke hand it's like well i guess every weekend they say go we're gonna do it then. yeah like oh. a year <laughs> like before i joined the rumors something like news like that would have been a lot more devastating for me but yeah with adding andy jewel and yeah the rumors and now with dark mirror coming back yep for yeah you know, a little bit i think <laughs> yeah trying to rekindle something in that, yeah, in that yeah. realm that's um, been fun as hell so let's go electric assault all right because that was something you had mentioned and people are probably like what was he talking about electric assault so like you you started a new band and it was basically just you and edgar uh, and garen yes. both of those guys were in dark mirror and you were in dark mirror and yep. you played a lot of shows together and, and loved that kind of music which i would just call thrash metal you mm-hmm. know it's just like the general concept of what what's going on there for the most part yeah and uh you guys were just like we need to just get together and play music together because we miss hanging out and playing music together yeah and- garen kind of had to step away for a little bit but uh once once he decided he wanted to start like playing guitar like live again it uh yeah he just hit both me it actually started with me and then we we may have like discussed edgar like on one of the first times we got back together Mm -hmm. so you bring edgar in and um you know things are going well i assume because i remember like I can see it over there. It's got all the writing on it, but you guys had like a whiteboard after a while and it was just like, well, we have this kind of jammy song that kind of sounds like this. And you yeah. had like, it was basically like... I guess that's that's still the original layout. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Yeah, but like when you, when you had originally like wrote these things out, it was just like, this song kind of sounds like this, yeah. might have influences of that. Hey riff, death metal, clean intro. I guess a few of these were old uh, Dark Mirror songs. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of fun to sit there and be like, all right, this, this is what we're going for in, in all these songs so uh and then you know to kind of i would come over sometimes and you guys would be playing you know in the basement it's just like dang these it feels like dark mirror you know in the basement it's kind of the direction that garen and i and blitz as well uh kind of started pulling <laughs> dark mirror into <laughs> you mean Ed- edgar in the, or, in the or blitz yeah yes yeah in the like freshly post alonzo era and we were kind of trying to find ourselves again yep Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, we basically turned it into like more of a thrashy thing. Yeah. Because the original older Dark Mirror stuff was more just like straight classic heavy metal like rock tunes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, it was that uh, that bridge between, ro- it's almost what we call like the Judas Priest-ish kind of like in that vein of, of rock and roll kind of metal yeah. type stuff. Not exactly the as British, but you know. Um, but yeah, I remember you guys turning it like way more thrashy and I don't want to say like getting even heavier than that, you know, like I could feel like at the time you were listening to a lot of Slayer. So influences of that started kind of leaking in a little yeah. bit, you know, and you know, the band started changing a little and bit. And just being adjacent to the whole like black market fetus and later traffic death sort of circle <laughs> mm-hmm. of, of individuals and just, yeah, that just rubbed off on on what uh we did in a lot of ways and it just pushed us to get like 
as heavy as possible <laughs> yeah and i mean like if you change singers you kind of have to change the way you're doing things sometimes you a little know? bit you know we've seen that in other bands in the past some of our favorite bands iron maiden might be one of those bands as a matter yeah. of fact so uh yeah so you start up this band you guys have recorded some stuff have you not we do we've got a cd out shocked into coherence uh through mortville uh noise records nice and uh a digital version is on Bandcamp currently nice and i think someone just posted the record on youtube oh cool (laughs) it's got a few positive comments on it oh that's awesome (laughs) what's crazy have you distributed it anywhere like spotify or anything or not yet um it might be it's i guess worth a look (laughs) if anything yeah i'd have to check it out but usually if something's on spotify it's on youtube as well there's like a way to go find it that's a little easier than others but you can usually just search like the band name and then topic yeah and, and then sometimes that's like the auto creation of like how to listen to stuff on like youtube music but like they put it on youtube and you know whatever anyways we can go check it out maybe see if it's out there but yeah yeah it's cool so definitely go to the band camp so i got i got a lot of links to put down below so we're gonna go andy jewel we're going the rumors we got electric assault <laughs> um i mean three finger betty and the sleepover will be on there as well down down below uh you'll have links to at least some of their be- biggest hits their biggest social media places mm-hmm. or something like that so uh electric assault definitely go to their band camp and find that that album if if you're into like you know metal if you miss dark mirror yeah you, you know that you like 80s speed metal <laughs> yes it's there it's there and it's awesome it's totally fun to watch you know it's uh, again it was like one of those things where it's like ah this reminds me of like i don't want to say my childhood but like my 20s you know like everyone always romanticizes they're like late teens into their 20s quite a bit you know and yeah. it's one of those things where i was like oh man it's like i want to so find fun. more bands that sound like megadeth <laughs> and yes. then you do and it's like hell yeah <laughs> all right you know and then you just become one of those bands though too you're just like all right i'm gonna be a band that sounds i'm making a band that sounds like this then you know and then you yeah. just like go around and you're like oh those guys kind of sound like this and you're like, you guys are cool you know and they're like on the next end of the state or something you know or you know start rubbing off on people around you you know you become one of those bands that's kind of what i felt like dark mirror did you know yeah um but yeah so dark mirror let's talk about that a little bit that that was you guys have a show or had a show or yeah it was a couple of weekends ago all right was like the ended up being a whole week of dark mirror related activity uh finding out like sunday that uh marco had studio time booked (laughs) at uh, flat black studios kind of south of iowa city Mm -hmm. and uh that you know maybe you can lay something down <laughs> and mm-hmm. i was just like stressing the whole time i was driving out there because he, yeah he'd, i'd gotten the a lot of the material basically on very short notice <laughs> yeah D- again that's it's so stressful but sometimes rewarding it is very rewarding yes yeah it, it was fun going in there and learning a song with just click and a guitar mm-hmm. and just figuring out what the drums are going to be from that yeah and yeah i just listened to it like 10 maybe 15 times to to burn it into my head a little bit and then went down and took like three maybe four takes on it Mm -hmm. and yeah that ended up being good (laughs) that's awesome dude that's so fun so marco uh the bassist is the guy kind of trying to spearhead this back into fruition yep so who else is in the band at this point or like what exactly is going on with the members it is marco and then uh dustin cregan old okay. blitz rooney yes and uh singer is jeremy wacko i believe he lives in like virginia okay and uh jeremy hall on the, uh, the other guitar rhythm cool. mostly that's awesome so it's yeah it's all people that have been in the fold at some point in time yeah so it's it was awesome getting together like early september ish i want to say for the first time <laughs> like it'd been the first time in like 10 years at least that these particular people have been in the same room together oh yeah 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 so I that mean, was pretty badass that's that's also super weird you spend all that time together doing all those shows driving to all those places and you know sp- you know loading all that gear and then sitting around and waiting all that time and then you just spend like you said like 10 years you haven't seen each other all in this all in the same room it's kind of yeah. wild you know dark mirror had changed over the years so it's kind of crazy because you guys did play a show in like 2022 or something like that with most of the original ish kind oh of. yeah i think that was uh late 2019 into the beginning of 2020 
And then we were supposed to open for like the three tremors. If you remember who that is, it's like three badass power metal singers. Oh yeah, I remember that being a thing. Okay. Supposed to open for them, supposed to open for Flotsam and Jetsam and maybe like one or two other badass shows that all just got wiped and yeah. th- then the band just sort of re fizzled out after that. So there was an attempted comeback. <laughs> yeah. <And> that, <laughs> right before shit went down. I always think that's funny though with the band is like e- every comeback is always well received because it's obvious that people miss it. You mm-hmm. know, it's like every show i mean i get it that like a lot of the shows you guys book are with like headliners and other things like that but it's also like every show you play people are going nuts for you guys because it's like we miss dark mirror you know it's like it's like don't go away i don't care what version you bring back just come back and stay here it just seems like that's the vibe that you know dozens and dozens and dozens of people at every single show seem to have breaking out old Mm t-shirts you know it's a thing. Yeah, I, I think it went something like that when we opened for Pentagram. That happened in that short window of time. Yeah, it's it's it's. You guys were the Iron Maiden of Des Moines. You know, <laughs> basically were. You know, I that's don't wanna, more or less what we were going for. Yeah, and I mean, you guys were that band because it's just like longevity, regardless of who changed hands doing what. People still loved you and came out to see you, and it's it's fun knowing that if you guys relaunch in any capacity, you're still going to have the love and support of like you know people around you. you yeah, know? yeah, the. Des Moines show we had at Maggie's Rumble Room uh, was uh, pretty well received and well attended and everyone was totally cool and uh, we're digging what we did. That's awesome. And yeah, Maggie's is an awesome place to play if you got a PA, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's another thing is like there are still some places to play, but you got to bring your own PA. So I guess maybe you have to invest in a PA, but whatever, just I don't know. Got, we got to kind of do it. We got to do the thing. That's so, right. So uh, by any means necessary, you know, go out For there sure. and play the shows at the places. And know. yeah, if you're basically going to need a PA <laughs> at some point, so you might as well just pick one up. Yeah. Might They're be, good to have on on hand. Yeah. It might be nice to have one, you know, and it doesn't take a bazillion dollars to have a, a nice enough PA to play a show. Mm-hmm. So Yep. You can find good deals on the internet. Yeah. It's definitely a thing. So played a show with dark mirror uh, i want to say you guys did like a meet and greet type thing or oh something yeah rats. Else too. yeah yeah that's pretty cool that was that was pretty fun to hang out and just yeah i'd never really looked uh, through rat's store after he had moved to the new unit in oh, the mall yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he used to be down by the hot topic but now he's like in basically the main drag, like across the way from where GameStop is. Cool. Yeah. Two of your favorite places right across the street. <laughs> <each other. laughs> That's awesome. So it was awesome looking through all of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's always got fun stuff there where it's just like you just look through and you're like, man, this shirt from this tour? Sweet. Ooh, you know? Yeah. Some of the tour shirts are insane. Yeah. And it's like a lot of them in there, like it's just like I had. I want this shirt bad. It's just like, I, 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 yeah, can't, I, I can't afford this shirt. I can't lay down $300. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, no way. And you go online, you look it up. It's like, that's eBay, that's what it goes that's, for. That's Shit. eBay pricing. <laughs> okay. Because I remember like, I talked about this with somebody. I remember somebody in our circle buying an Iron Maiden shirt from the 90s that was like, was faded and had holes in it. And they paid like 150 plus dollars for it. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, a tattered old... Uh, Iron Maiden shirt went yeah. for $150 online. Like So Sunday was the, with rumors, the surly, it's called Darkness Day 2024, 20, which is just huge crowd, awesome crowd. Mm-hmm. But then the day before that, we played uh, in Janesville, Wisconsin at a place called Retro City Rockade. Yeah. It's just an old school retro arcade with a, stock, a rock stage on it. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> so you, actual, play pinball, like, you play pinball while there's a rock band going. Yes. Cool. Precisely. Play San Francisco Rush. <laughs> well, one of the things about uh, this uh, particular venue is they also had like a small retro game shop inside of it. Oh, cool. So uh, it's like a venue that has, it's like a up down type place, but it has a stage and they also sell stuff. Yes. Okay. Yeah. A little uh, separate, like the whole storefront basically. And then it goes into the big like production area and that's just where the big arcade units and the stages that's crazy but in the front where the shop is uh, above the counter they had like five or six old tour Mm t-shirts from all the way back in the day for like hard rock he had a guns and roses one Oh, he had cool. a Kiss Hot in the Shade tour. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Second Kiss references show. He had, a, he had like a Metallica one 
uh, someone getting like brain surgery on it. I forget what the actual phrase on it was. But I think that had like a $1,200 price on it. Dude, it's crazy because like, again, some of these shirts that like, I don't remember like, uh, I had looked up a few of mine and a few of mine were worth a decent amount of money. But it's like, people people want this stuff and mm-hmm. i don't know why but it's it's cool and it kind of makes me feel glad that i have like a giant collection of shirts that if i really needed to i could just go on ebay and sell them and yeah live yeah they off, actually live off of them <laughs> they have a lot of worth for you know because for whatever reason in that era like the bands just connected so hard with the fans <laughs> yeah oh man I... that yeah they're just they become like diehards Oh man, that's so cool. And so yeah, and that type of music gets that level of fandom that someone who, you know, is wasn't around back in the day and is, you know, two decades younger and still gets into the same bands for the same reasons and they're like, I need this freaking, you know, Alice in Hell tour tur- tour t shirt. <laughs> cool. Uh, that's awesome. So like I, I'm trying to think, like, what would be one of the shirts I would buy if I could find an old one? It'd probably be just an old Iron Maiden shirt. Yeah, like, that's probably what I'd like go for. what tour somewhere in time, like, <laughs> the, the first big one they did. Oh, or, shit. Or, like, the, the first, like, American tour. Yeah. Cause, oh, gosh. The fucking Number of the Beast would be cool as fuck. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But then again, like, the shirts now are pretty sweet, though, too, because they make, like, almost custom shirts for every location and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. It's, dude, yeah, that's, I don't know. Concert t-shirts, I don't go to as many concerts, and I don't buy as many t-shirts at concerts, but I still do go to concerts, and I still do buy t-shirts when I'm there. Yeah, uh, going out on tour with the rumors, like, there's been a lot of awesome opening bands that I just, like had to get something <laughs> yeah and that's the best part about going to local shows where like let's say like we went to go see joe satriani and yeah. my shirt was like 40 dollars or something and i was just like well, okay i'll buy one yeah. I'll, I'll wear it five times and put it away and never <laughs> whatever because it's a collector's item yeah, now <laughs> yeah whatever i don't know so like i'll buy one sure cool um but then you go to a local show and it's like three finger betty t-shirts like what are ours ten dollars like i don't know like band shirts aren't expensive you know you go somewhere you might spend twenty dollars on a shirt if it has like multicolored screen printing on it to Mm -hmm. make it yield something that's worth that or whatever but like you don't usually like spend too much money on band shirts and that's the one thing where it's like i always thought man if i'm going somewhere and i watch a band and i enjoy them in any sense and they have t-shirts and it's like if it's 20 or under, if anything they have is 20 or under and I enjoy it, I'm just going to buy one of them. I just have to be able to wear it. A hat, uh, a shirt. What am I wearing for a shirt? Blue Ribbon Ramblers. So like, I'm even wearing, like you're wearing an Electric Assault shirt, which is your own band. Which still, I just pulled out of that box. <laughs> yeah. Still, it's just like you got to have something from, you know, that's my way of supporting. And it's like, I feel like that's just as good as buying an album or something like that. I mean, it's all whatever. It's this is just what I like to do is wear their stuff and go watch them live. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's just kind of how it is. But yeah, it's fun that bands can connect that much. Uh, I'm, I'm going to point right back to dark mirror. I remember that show when you guys all joined forces to come back together and play that one show, blah, blah, something in vaudeville muse. Mm, yeah. I mean, there's people up and down the staircase. I mean, it was just usually the stuff where they're like, you can't stand in the staircase, but it's just like, well, it's packed. It's the only place to stand. the floor <laughs> is packed. And unless I'm standing in the back bathroom hallway, I don't have anywhere to stand. Unless, yeah. you know, sitting in the back booth in the upper deck. Yeah, like the, the, other, the loft up there, yeah. the other place that was open. But yeah, it was packed. And it, there were a lot of people with old Dark Mirror shirts. And I thought it was fun to see like, oh, I have that one. Oh, I have that one. Oh, when did they have that one? I wonder that. Yeah, one, this know? guy's got the one with the faces on it. Yeah, I want <laughs> nobody the... bought that. <laughs> yeah, I want that one. Come on, what are we talking about here? But you know, that's another fun thing about like three finger Betty shirts is like, it's not like we've sold like gargantuan amounts of shirts, but the amount of shirts we've sold is insane. <laughs> it's so mm-hmm. funny to think about that. Where you know, and I'm sure the rumors, same deal. You said I think recently, like one of your shows, the merch line afterwards, you just kind of sit there and sell your merch and meet and greet and talk to people and hem and haw. And it was like an hour long. Yeah, hour plus. Yeah, it's like yeah, we were at it for a while. That, that was yesterday. That's it, fun. That's early. That's crazy. You know and that again. You know tat them out to the crowd of people that were there it was the perfect you. crowd perfect band for the perfect crowd that's awesome <laughs> like all the stars aligned for that show i love it that's perfect for everyone promoter that's perfect for the venue that's perfect for the the crowd and perfect for you, you and know? yeah for most places we've never played we don't know what to expect so we always go in with this level of like trepidation almost mm-hmm. <laughs> and then yeah just it's awesome when things 
vastly exceed your expectations so that was that was a really awesome show that's one for the books for sure i love that stuff i remember playing a show oh man we went over an hour i remember playing a show with uh jesse wilson up in okoboji and it was like one of the first shows we'd played up there because we yeah he and i had played up there before but not with a full band so we bring a full band up there you know he brings a full band up there hires me i'll go up there with him a handful of other people it's just like ah you know this is gonna be good but i just don't know what everyone's going to think about it because it's our first time here. And then, you know, like two, three songs and you're like, oh, they're loving this. This is, and then you just cut loose. Yeah. You know, it's like the best feeling ever, you know, to, to know that you're bringing exactly what people want to see and you're right there on stage. You're in the right place at the right time. That's right. It's true. You know, so, so we've talked about, uh, Andy Jewell, we've got The Rumors, we've got Electric Assault, Dark Mirrors come back in some capacity or mm-hmm. another, uh, Three Finger Betty and the Sleepover are on pause for the moment while John's paws are on the mend. And bonus item, uh, I I think right after I moved in here, beginning of August, I filled in for Resurrection Mary. Oh yes, that's correct. Old Jason Boggs. Jason band. Boggs from Boggs Hole Avenue yep. Tavern. Definitely go check. Got himself a badass band. <laughs> check him out. Oh, it's another one where it's like if you like Led Zeppelin to kiss, anything in that area. Yeah, of just music. old stoner rock if you dig just yeah, badass old stoner rock yeah. and roll. When you turned on the radio it's back in the go. day and that was the the rock, that's the stuff. You yeah. Know? That's the one. And yeah, it sucks honestly. It's it's really good for them, but it's unfortunate I can't uh, fill in for them anymore because they found a, a more permanent fixture to play the drums for them. Oh man. Yeah, so such a um, I'm happy, very elated, but also sad at the same time. <laughs> that yeah, I can't play those awesome songs. <laughs> yeah, it's a rough one because you're like, I want to go play music with these people. It's so fun, but it's like, I, I don't have the time and they need something different uh like something more permanent you said exactly, you know yeah. somebody that they can i need you this weekend okay i, I'm a, I can be there mm-hmm. you know uh, so they need one of those not that you know because you're just taking bookings left and right Cause, yeah i think uh they uh resurrection mary they got something coming up i think next friday opening for i think a guy from white lion oh cool <laughs> i think yeah. like the ripping guitar dude from white lion a perfect opener for that you yeah. know it'll be a good band yeah that's fun stuff you know it's fun to go out there and be able to play these shows so we got all the bands they got the bonus item out is there anything we didn't cover that you're just like ah we should probably talk about this real quick um not a lot of things going on in the speed run yeah i was realm. Going, wondering about that <laughs> i've made a couple of like title screen speed run mashups <laughs> that's about all i've done i've printed stickers <laughs> oh cool yeah yeah i do still have a speed run sticker on one of my guitar cases somewhere so yes it's definitely it was one of the first ones on there it's like right in the middle on the front so yeah easy to spot <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll put links for everything down below. Uh, you know, Clint Wheelman, again, we've been buddies forever. If you want more, you know, history on any of this stuff, go back to episode one. Find out how awkward we both were trying to start mm-hmm. a podcast together and, and, and doing this stuff, you know. And uh, I want to say thanks again for when I decided to fire it back up. You were just like, hell yeah, I'll do an episode. <laughs> so we're back at it. Plus, we had, a, we had a lot to talk about, you know. There's a lot that people don't know. It's true. It's it's a lot to catch up on, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So hopefully we'll, we'll bring you back on again. Hopefully we can bring John on. I can uh, record up to four people with this little doodad pretty oh, easily. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I guess one thing I do have is uh, there's an electric assault show coming on, uh, I think, after Thanksgiving. Actually, the weekend before Thanksgiving. The weekend? Ooh, even better. Yeah, yeah, here, I believe it's at XBK on November 22nd. Oh, cool. November 22nd. Check that out. Electric Assault. That's, uh, you know, if, if you like metal, go check it out. It's yep. right in your wheelhouse. This is, You're going to love this stuff. Perfect for you. Next Friday in Ames, Andy Jewell at the Angry Irishman. As we're recording this next Friday. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to be out uh, maybe like at the end of October. Yeah beginning of november i haven't decided i don't know i don't know how many i got a just a bunch of i gotta edit still so, all right well the show kicked ass i'm yeah, gonna tell yes, you yes it did it sure <laughs> certainly did oh yeah for sure for sure where was that show at though the andy jewel show where oh was that? angry irishman ames iowa ames iowa oh cool cool yeah that's, it's, good. it's a we, weird place for venues they they kind of like come and go and it's hard to figure out what's actually acceptant of you know rock and roll style music yeah that <laughs> something stick- with a drum set <laughs> yeah that sticks around for a long time yep. yeah yeah because there's a few places there where it's like this place has a stage and then they'll just like put chairs and tables up there and have people eat up there. yeah or it's like a karaoke stage more yeah or less. it's like all right well we need to do something different with this but again yeah that's a fun that's a fun place but again a lot of turnover in Ames where it's like hard to find permanent venues that it been is for, yeah established for a long period of time but yeah that's gonna be super cool because that's also a fun place to play though because i've uh been there while people have played shows and that's 
it's a fun place. So again, I think it's a place where people just really enjoy watching music because yeah. they don't have a ton of it to watch, you know. So definitely check that one out. Oh wait, it's already passed. So that that was a good show. It yes. was. It was awesome. It was amazing. We freaking hauled balls on okay, that. Okay. So for the next Andy Jewel shows, for any shows, again, we're talking metal rock and roll we're talking punk we're talking uh i mean just uh, things punk old school psychedelic <laughs> yeah punk that sounds a little bit like weezer we got uh you know we got all the different bands uh, and and more to come I mean, it sounds like you're just always doing stuff so yeah go check them out somewhere basically anywhere in iowa anywhere around the midwest if you threw a dart in the middle of iowa went 200 miles out and drew a circle you could probably find you somewhere in there on mm-hmm. any given weekend more or less playing with some band that you'll probably enjoy you know <laughs> one of those has to be your favorite types of music so go check it out for sure links all over down below thanks clint thank you very much it's been awesome being here <laughs> there you go episode 225 with clint wheelman it's there it's in the bank he's got all sorts of great stuff coming up so make sure you check out all of the links down below uh there's links for like basically everything down there we're talking uh The big ones he was talking about in this episode, you know, we got your Andy Jules, uh, we got your Rumors, there's going to be some Electric Assault links down there, there's going to be all your typical stuff down there below as as well, the stuff you're used to, you're talking your Three Finger Bettys, your Sleepovers, things like that, so check them all out, go find, check out those new bands he's with, it's really cool, I mean, the Rumors aren't new, they've been around for like 10 years, but uh, yeah, they're just breathing fire out there right now, they're just killing it, and uh, Andy Jewell is not one to be slept on as well. I know some of you are like, I don't know who that is. Look it up. Trust me, go look it up. And uh, if you like thrash metal, we're talking, you know, that Metallica kind of stuff, uh, check out Electric Assault. Wild. He's in a wild range of bands, and it's pretty pretty cool. You know, it's, it's cool. I get to be able to play with him in one band, too. So uh, thumbs up to awesome Clint Wheelman over there on the drums. Check out all those links down below. There's also links down below for Fort Dodge Fine Arts Association. Make sure you check them out, helping us out with this episode. And I also want to say there's Audible Farm links down below. Uh, The Patreon, you can watch the video versions of this one day early if you really, really want to. For all the hardcore Audible Farm fans, one day early. So check out the Patreon if you'd like to do that. Otherwise, audiblefarm.com has basically everything you you need. Tell all your friends Audible Farm's back. Tell them it's back. I, I know uh, a lot of people know, but there's a lot of people that don't know. So uh, the inbox is absolutely flooded, absolutely flooded with people that want to be on the podcast. So I'm still digging through it. I'm still digging through it. I'm trying to do these uh, a little bit differently than I used to. I'm trying to like bank a bunch of episodes back. So I'm trying to still trying to figure out how I'm supposed to time everything out. But we're getting everything kind of figured out, you know. Give me, you know, 10, 20, 30 episodes. Maybe we'll get things cooking again the way we were supposed to be cooking. So, again, I'm just trying to stay ahead and do do the best I can. So if uh, you've reached out and I haven't reached out back to you or we haven't set a date yet or I said I want you on and then it wouldn't work so we have to reschedule, it's I'm sorry. We're, I'm working on it. I'm trying my best. Uh, got a lot of stuff going on, so... Uh, I love it. I love that everyone's out there playing music and everyone is very, very passionate about it. Make sure you check out the links to everybody that's uh, helping this podcast be possible, like Fort Dodge Fine Arts Association, and check out the links to all of the guests that are on the podcast. That's most important. Otherwise, tell everyone the podcast is back. Like, subscribe, share, wherever you're at. Check it out on YouTube. We uh, beefed up the YouTube channel, gave it a little redesign. The website looks a little bit different now. Everything's kind of coming back in a 2.0 fashion. So we'll see you. Uh, We'll see what happens. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you're still here this late, uh, appreciate it. I'll check you guys all next week. Peace.